Hey guys, what's going on? I hope you guys have enjoyed the best works extravaganza from the crew so far. Thank you guys so much for watching Shane's, Joe's, Lucas's, and Alex's videos. But now it is time for my videos. My best and my worst films of 2017. Starting off with my worst films of 2017. Because even though I think we can all agree that while there were some great films this year, we can also agree that there were plenty, and I mean plenty of shit stains out there. And before I go on, I have to mention a few guidelines. The first thing is that I have not seen every single film that came out this year. So if you guys are expecting one certain film to be on here, but it was on here, most likely I didn't see the film. So my apologies in advance for that. Second thing is that these are my personal picks. I realize that people are not going to agree with the films that I hate, but these are the films that I despised with a burning passion. Now with that being said, let's get into my dishonorable mentions. Starting off with Suburbicon, Despicable Me 3, Kong, Skull Island, Ghost in the Shell, The Dark Tower, my guilty pleasure of the year, Baywatch, Wish Upon, The Great Wall, and Triple X, The Return of Xander Cage. All films that didn't quite make it onto my list. This honorable mentions aside, let's get into my top 10 shit stands of the year. Yeah! Number 10. Let's start off the list with some holiday cheer, or in this case, holiday torture with A Bad Mom's Christmas. I mean, seriously, talk about a sequel that no one really asked for or that we didn't even need in the first place. As I said in my review, it felt like that the writer director team of John Lucas and Scott Moore, I believe that's what their names are, it felt like that they got together, wrote a bunch of scenes together, slapped a holiday theme on it, and just released it as A Bad Mom's Christmas. The main reason why this film isn't higher is because the chemistry between the three main leads is still here, and Susan Sarandon is actually tolerable to watch. Otherwise, Bad Mom's Christmas committed probably the worst possible atrocity with a holiday film. It did not get me in the holiday spirit. Number nine. You know, I actually used to be a huge fan of this comedian back in the day. I loved her in the Comedy Central roast. I loved her in the film that she made with Judd Apatow in 2015. But then she made that god awful leather special and then Snatch came out and now Amy Schumer is one of my least favorite comedians. Now I know that she could come back up but after this year she really has to do a lot to make me get her to like her again. The best way I can describe Snatch is that it was just a stupid movie. This was honestly the dumbest movie of 2017. The two redeeming aspects of this movie were Goldie Hawn and Amy Schumer's brother's character. His character made me laugh hysterically at one particular scene. And also the dumbest scene of the year, the tapeworm scene. <sighs> From what I remember, Goldie Hawn had not acted years prior to this movie, and this was the movie that had her come back into movies. I feel so bad for Goldie Hawn right now. Ever see a trailer to a film that looked very promising, but then once you walked out of said film, you were baffled by just how bad that film is. Yeah, that was my experience with The Snowman. I am still baffled by just how bad this movie was. You have a great director, supposedly you have amazing source material, and they have a great cast that include J.K. Simmons, Rebecca Ferguson, and Michael Fassbender. This is the movie this year that made me think, what happened? This film was not investive at all, and in fact, it was just boring. I knew something was off in that first five minutes, but I kept telling myself, okay, just stick around, just maybe it'll get better. But no, it just gets worse as the film goes on. The film is shot great. I can say that much. Number seven. Oh, January, January, January. Specifically, the very beginning of January. You never cease to amaze me with just how shittier horror films are. My number seven, and also the dumbest title of the year, The Bye Bye Man. <laughs> I mean, seriously, how can you take a title like The Bye Bye Man seriously? Now, The Bye Bye Man, to me, is easily the worst horror film of 2017. This film was not scary at all. The scares, including those pathetic ass jump scares. The Bye Bye Man was trying to be this amazing new urban legend, and those of you who don't know me personally, urban legends I absolutely love. I love urban legends. I love the Bloody Mary urban legend, and I love the Jersey Devil urban legend. I guarantee those two urban legends are laughing their asses off knowing that the Bye Bye Man tried to be as cool as they are. And the fact that the Bye Bye Man just throws up so many different things that could have been really cool for the mystery of it, but then it just lets them just fall down. Now I will say this, had the ending of the film culminated with the Bye Bye Man actually being Justin Timberlake doing this. Me, but it ain't no lie, baby, bye, bye, bye. Bye, bye. 
Otherwise, that would've been the best plot twist in film history. Number six. I wish I could forget about this movie, but my god, unforgettable was just that unforgettably bad. Where do I even start with this movie? If you look at Unforgettable from just the right angle, this could be the funniest movie of the year. But unfortunately, it just takes itself way too damn seriously. If Catherine Argo is trying to make this her comeback, keep going, you'll you'll get there soon, I guess. And the things this movie tries to do to make for some tension, especially in the third act when Rosario Dawson leaves her cell phone in her car, and the only supposed way to call the cops was to dial something that was connected to a landline. Who cares about landlines? Take your damn cell phone with you! And I'll never forget that face that Rosera Dawson's boyfriend's character makes when he finds out that his ex-wife was behind everything. And the worst part of it all is that this movie actually tries to set up a sequel. How about no? <laughs> another Lifetime movie and another Fatal Attraction ripoff. Need I say more? Number five. At number five, we have the worst anime film of the year, and that is the Emoji Movie. Now, I know you guys are thinking, whoa, 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 how is this not higher? I know you specifically said that you left this movie in almost catatonic state. When you watch a movie called The Emoji Movie with its concepts, are you really expecting it to be good? I mean, seriously. I watched this movie expecting garbage, and I got garbage. That's the only reason why this movie isn't higher. The movie was what I expected it was going to be. But does that take away from the fact that it's a shitty anime and movie? Nope, not at all. Emoji Movie is made by a group of people who think they could just get on by with the premise of emojis because emojis are a huge thing now. But no, it didn't work on me because I thought this movie was not only horrible, but it was boring as hell. 90 minutes felt like they were three hours long. And I even love so much that T.J. Miller tried to boast on live TV that Emoji Movie was the fastest produced anime and movie ever. I had to break it to you, TJ, but that doesn't make it good. Yeah, not only is the Emoji Movie the worst animated film of the year, but it is also one of the worst animated films of the decade. Kids movies deserve better, animation deserves better than this. Number four. Michael Bay, I hope you keep to your promise this time because Transformers The Last Night was just as terrible as the previous films. Now, I will say this right now, Transformers The Last Night is better than Age of Extinction simply because it is a shorter movie. But still, it felt like it was a three hour long film. Transformers The Last Night, I feel like, had promise with it due to the fact that Aaron Kruger was not part of the screenwriting. Instead, we had the writers of Black Hawk Down and the first Iron Man. And you know what? And in the first five minutes, I was like, you know what? Okay. This is not pretty promising. We could actually get a good movie here. But then I started to hear dialogue and I just thought, oh, all right. Let's throw it. All right, let's fight through the paint. Let's get through it. You still have the human characters that you do not give a shit about. You still have Transformers that you don't give a shit about. And the fact that Optimus Prime and Megatron are barely in the movie, it's probably the biggest atrocity of them all when it comes to this Transformers film. Yeah, Michael Bay has promised for the third time now that this Transformers will be his last Transformers film. I am praying to God that third time's the charm with this one. <laughs> Coming out at number three was a film I originally was not going to see. I had refused to see this movie. I passed my screening because I had heard so many people trashing it, people saying, dude, this movie is god awful. But then a couple of those same people were saying, dude, if you're going to make a top 10, you need to see this movie. And I said, absolutely not. I am not going to torture myself through this movie. Then cut to a few minutes later when I saw someone I had shared one of the scenes from the film with the tagline, one of the funniest scenes ever. I watched the scene, didn't laugh at it at all. And I told myself, uh, all right, I guess I gotta watch this movie now. And yeah, you guys are right. Fist fight was terrible. I mean, God was a terrible. Charlie Day and Ice Cube, these two have proven to be hysterical in the past. So I wonder in this film where their comedic talents went. The events of Fist Fight are so unbelievable to the point where the term suspension of disbelief doesn't even exist in the film's vocabulary. And not to mention the humor of this movie. Oh my god. And not to mention the most annoying character of the year involving Jillian Bell as a teacher that wanted to fuck her students. God! And the scene I was mentioning before was the talent show scene, the scene that everyone was telling me was absolutely hysterical. It wasn't. I was cringed the entire time and I was questioning my faith in the movie going audience the whole time. Number two! 
Coming in at my number two is also a number two, and thank god this is only a trilogy because I don't know how much more I can take of these movies. Fifty Shades Darker, aka Fifty Shades Shittier as I call it. Yeah, somehow Fifty Shades Darker was even worse than Fifty Shades of Grey. I don't know how that's possible. From what I remember, E.L. James' husband had written the screenplay for this one who had never written a screenplay before, and it shows because my god, this movie is just laughably bad. These movies aren't romantic, they're not sexy. I know there are fans of these movies and good on them that you like them, but I cannot stand the Fifty Shades movies at all. Dakota Johnson and Jamie Dornan don't have any chemistry or do they even have any chemistry in the first place? To any guy out there who is dragged by their girlfriends or wives or significant others, whatever, I feel so bad for you guys. But now it is inevitable for the day in which once I see Fifty Shades Freed, I can finally say this. YES! And it's done! It's number one. Alrighty guys, here we are. My number one shit stain of 2017. The film that not only angered me in every way, but the film that just broke me completely. My number one worst film of 2017. Resident Evil, the final chapter. And before I go on, I want to address something. I realize that there are a huge fan of this film franchise. I'm not hating on you guys for liking this movie. You're allowed to like what you want to like. For me, however, I fucking despise this movie. Where do I even start with this movie? The plot holes in this movie. Oh my god. The plot holes in this movie. The plot holes? The continuity of this film? What continuity? If I were to go over the plot holes within this movie and the rest of the Red Civil movie franchise, that would take me hours. Also, the action sequences in this movie. Good God. Resident Evil The Final Chapter easily has the worst action I have seen in years. This movie has even worse action than The Legend of Hercules. I am going that far. This movie is supposed to be this epic conclusion to the Resident Evil film franchise, but it doesn't feel like a conclusion. It feels like just another Resident Evil film. And I know a couple of you are thinking that I'm only playing this film as my number one because I'm a huge Resident Evil fan. That's one of the reasons why. And yes, I am a huge Resident Evil fan. I have grown up with these games. I have played almost every single game. Almost every single game. Alice is one of the worst Resident Evil characters ever created. The backstory, oh. The conclusion to her character. Oh, this is where it gets good. The fact that Alice is a clone. Alice is a clone? That's your big plot twist, Paul W.S. Anderson? Really? The fact that Albert Wesker, the biggest badass villain of the Resident Evil franchise, is killed by a fucking door? Really? The way to stop the infection was to take the antivirus, the thing to cure the infection. What did you have to do with it? Just smash it on the ground and everything was good again. Are you kidding me? Resident Evil The Final Chapter, to me, is an absolute disgrace of the Resident Evil name itself. This movie is a disgrace to video game based movies, but it is also the worst film of the year. Good job, Paul W. S. Anderson. Well done. Well done. Whoa, all right. Guys, those are my top 10 favorite films of 2017. I hope you guys enjoyed the list. That was so much fun. And my god, that felt so good to get all that rage out. But the extravaganza is not quite over yet. Tomorrow is the final video in which that has my top 10 favorite films of 2017. But until that video comes out, if you guys haven't already, please check out the guys' top 10 best and worst films of 2017. Please like, share, and subscribe to see more just like this one. And if you want to see this again, next year but of course until my top 10 favorite films of 2017 i will see you guys then and i will see you guys next time